So now I'm walking at what most would call a normal hiking pace. And I feel like I'm sprinting. Well, if you've seen our most recent travel update, you'll know that we ended up going to Telluride and then we went to Sedona to visit family for a week. We're now headed back up to Colorado. We're caravanning with Victoria's parents. They also have a 27 foot Airstream. And we're first going to Carbondale, then we're going to a currently undisclosed location for her dad, Ernie's birthday celebration. We've been camped out here for two days in the overflow parking lot at the KOA here in Carbondale. There was only room for one and the parents get dibs. Yesterday we spent just a little bit of time exploring Carbondale and then we drove out through Aspen and then up over Independence Pass, which was really cool. It was actually a great way to, I guess, relive what we did last year with a better, a better experience than last Much year. Much better experience. We were brand new to RV life and I found this on Google. It was this little place, had great reviews. The only thing is it was on Independence Pass. And when you look at the map, it looks like a big normal road. Yeah, it just looks like this highway that heads out of Aspen going over to Leadville. There was a sign that said no vehicles over 35 feet. And I think it was flashing at us too, but we were desperate to find camping on a Friday night and we just kept going. You know, sometimes you go to campgrounds and they say, you know, 35 feet length is like the max you can do. And like, we, we can fit into that. So we were like, I don't know, I think we'll be fine. It looks like a paved road. We are 50 feet combined though. <laughs> So anyways, it was absolutely horrible and treacherous and the stupidest thing we could have ever, ever done with our camper. The road literally becomes a single lane road on the side of a mountain. And there were cars that were having to back up for us because we had a camper, we couldn't back up. And then when we finally pulled off of Independence Pass, we got stuck on this dirt road headed to our site. And that was horrible too. All equally as bad. And not only like was the dirt road bad, there was also this giant rock going into the campground that we had to skirt by it with our camper. And our, the edge of our airstream was probably that far from this rock. We pretty much went back into town after ditching our trailer and realized that the police were ticketing people $1,500 if you're over 35 feet for going on Independence Pass. So we freaked out. We said, okay, we gotta leave. And we were worried about coming across more cars going down. So we waited until literally the middle of the night, made a break for it. And there's a free overnight parking spot in Carbondale. And we stayed there that night. Like listen to the signs. I think that's what we learned from that. Yeah, so the biggest lesson from that is we always pay really close attention to the signs when we're headed into unfamiliar areas because the signs are there for a reason. So today we're supposed to be in Breckenridge this afternoon, but I-70 is currently closed due to mudslides. And so ironically enough, Google's trying to route us over Independence Pass. Yeah, which, which we're not doing. Definitely not doing that. And the only other option is to go take this eight hour detour up through Northern Colorado. And we're not doing that either. So we're, trying, we're just gonna go to Carbondale. We're gonna park it in that same parking lot we camped at a year ago and just hopefully wait for I-70 to open. Well, I-70 is still closed, so we found an alternate route that takes us down all the way through Gunnison, then up to Breckenridge. So it turns about a two hour, 45 minute drive into a six hour drive. Thank you, Wavy. It's too early. Okay, let's try that again. Does anybody want to point to where we're going? Ernie, do you know what we're doing? I have no clue. Okay, what are Obviously, you- Obviously we're going on a hike because we got a hiking pole. Unless this is all a facade. All right, I, I want you to turn around and look up. No, we're not doing that, are we? We're going and we're hiking that. We're doing a 14er. So we're doing Quandry Peak today. This is a 14er. What's the elevation? I think we get up to about 14,200 something feet. Yeah. The reason we had to start so early is because you have to be off the mountain in order to avoid afternoon thunderstorms. We got in Breckenridge pretty late last night, woke up at four o'clock. So we're doing over 3,000 feet of climbing in three miles on five hours of sleep. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be awesome. Third of a mile in, how are you doing? Good, it's actually very gradual, which makes me scared. Yeah, I feel like we're definitely not climbing at a rate of a thousand feet per mile right yeah, now. Yeah, it's gotta get steep. Trees are getting thinner. You know what that means? Line. Air's getting thinner.
I had to stop for a bathroom break. So now I'm walking at what most would call a normal hiking pace. And I feel like I'm sprinting. The uh, trees have really thinned out, which is an indicator of around 12,000 feet getting above tree line. Bad. I don't think it's bad. Yeah, it's not terrible. It's definitely steep, but it's a sustained kind of steep. Yeah, and the views, I mean, yeah. these are awesome. Yeah, stellar views the whole way up. I think some 14ers can be a little bit barren. Yeah. Or short on the views, but this is awesome. I think what's cool too is we were, what, 20 minutes away from this in Breckenridge? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> didn't well, have to. Wasn't a big drive. Didn't have to get up at 3 a.m. Yeah. to drive to a trailhead. Break 13,000 feet. Yes. 1,200 to go. I feel like it's mellowed out just a little bit. It's really not that steep. I think we're preparing for the final push though. Yeah. You put a rock in your 60 year old dad's backpack? We have a nice little respite before with the final push. We're just walking along this almost perfectly flat ridge line. It's a little rocky, but the ground is flat. And then we have to go 1,100 feet up that thing. You ready for this? Yeah, this is the steep part. I feel like we've come a long way, but it doesn't look that steep behind us. Feeling tired? Yeah. Feel tired. I don't think the camera even captures how steep it is behind you. It's pretty steep, but it's beautiful. I think we've got 400 feet to go. Almost there. 400 feet of up. Big up. About a third of a mile left, I think. This last mile is by far the hardest part of the hike because you're higher than you start. Yep. Steeper. It's steeper. It's loose, but it's the best part. I've been on good authority. We're almost there, just over this rise. Just like 100 feet of climbing left. I hit my butt. Yep, not there yet. Nope. Almost there. Almost there. Right over your shoulder. <laughs> Ernie, you can see the top from here. Yeah. I promise you. <laughs> all right, are we ready? Yeah. Did we get all of our stuff? Yeah, here. Hey guys, oh, thanks oh, for pushing me up here. Oh, there's some lightning. They like they're coming our way fast. Yeah. Look at how this plug over. We've got a mountain goat ahead of us. That's so cool, this goat just followed us like down the whole trail. I don't know if it's going for water or food or trying to get in the trees just like we are to avoid the storm. I think he's going for tree line. I think so too. I mean, he was making a beeline for it and I don't blame him. It's, it's a pretty wicked storm. That's cool. Yeah. It's really cool. So like my first instinct was to smell it, which I think is it's kind of weird, but it doesn't smell like, like an animal, like a gamey animal, you know? It just smells like wool. All right, let's get some socks. No easy 14ers, I would say that is definitely true. 